Gainsborough Hall is a grade one listed building. It's a very important building, very important medieval manor house. It's probably one of the best surviving medieval manor houses in the country and certainly has some really fantastic features such as the medieval kitchen and the great hall which are wonderful and intact. They've, they've not changed at all or been damaged in any way. Well, I believe that in around about 1974 time, um, there was some building works going on in Gainsborough Old Hall, and they actually had to take down part of the wall, and they discovered behind the wall the remains of the wall painting. We think the paintings were commissioned um, in the early 1600s to mid 1600s. Um, this time the hall was owned by William Hickman of London. He'd owned it since 1596. Fabulously wealthy man, but the house would have been suffering some neglect up until that time, so probably in need of a, a spruce up, a, a complete renovation, which we know he undertook. These are London incomers, very deeply religious, um, very godly people, and Puritan. There are several areas which could, you know, uh, cause a commissioning of a, a painting of this, you know, importance. Um, one, 1603, uh, William Hickman was knighted. That would be a cause of celebration. The fashions are changing. Fashions are always changing and we like to keep up with those. Uh, he'd also recently married uh, for the second time. Maybe the new Mrs Hickman would like a, a, a makeover of the house. And it may have been during this renovation that the wall painting was uh, commissioned. Or perhaps it was a little later. It could have been post 1625 when William Hickman's son uh, Willoughby is in uh, ownership of the house and we know that he was knighted so lots of causes for celebration. In the county this has got to be one of the the gems of Lincolnshire it, to have a manor house of, of this age and beauty and the historical links. This house has so many links to the Reformation, to the Pilgrim Fathers. It just abounds with stories that people, you know, would love to hear. The type of things we're hoping to find are um, more information about the painting and its techniques. If we can find out more about the patronage, more about the date range. Um, we're certainly, with the uncovering, we're getting more of the design. We are literally uncovering the painting, so we are taking off later layers of lime wash and um, distempers. And that's revealing more of the design, which will help certainly with the interpretation of the paintings overall. Because it can tell us a lot about the tastes and attitudes and ideologies of people in a period when there may not be any other information, no documents, for instance, or um, no historical other historical record. They've painted the backgrounds first and you've got a red border along the top and the main area is black and then they've actually done quite a sophisticated build-up of layers so they then painted white onto the foliage design and then they've used probably three different reds, two certainly and probably a third one that's now faded. So there's quite a, a range and sophistication of colour and the way they put it together is very smart. The best method for producing a reconstruction of the wall painting was to start with producing a watercolour of the original wall painting and work with an artist to interpret the wall painting to produce a, a watercolour reconstruction which recreated the different designs using the colour palette that came from the paint analysis. Now the watercolour itself is an artist's interpretation because the wall painting is quite badly damaged but we did have enough information to produce quite a stunning reconstruction. In the late 16th and early 17th century we know that uh, wall hangings were quite popular um, in halls 
but also uh, it was becoming quite fashionable to have um, wall paintings that imitated textiles. There are lots of examples of um, trailing foliage and fruits that were used in embroidery designs and from the types of designs that we see on this wall painting, the fruits and the foliage, the trailing foliage and the, the birds, these were all very popular designs that were used in textiles. I'm working in the Old Hall with um, a women's group and we're working on um, using the wall painting that they've been uncovering as inspiration to make a textile wall hanging. So the wall hanging has um, all this um, information on it of the flowers and it's got birds on it and they did beadwork on it. It's um, absolutely lovely what they managed to do. As an embroiderer I'm here to help women, the women learn to use embroidery techniques uh, that will have been around at the period. So gold work's been around for at least a thousand years in this country and we were really, really good at it. Um, it used to be called Opus Angelicanum because we were so good. Um, even the popes used to order um, garments from, from England. But it is extremely simple. Essentially laid onto the surface of fabrics and couched on. But you'd have to have a lot of money to do it because the threads then were gold. It was a fashionable form of interior decoration and a lot of people with disposable income did have them. Um, there's a wide range of materials and techniques, a wide range of designs available, and some people chose to have them and some didn't. And some might have had real textiles and some chose to have imitation ones, which is the case here. People have had painted decoration in their houses for a long period, but in some regions you get a better survival rate of paintings than in others. It depends. You have to have the right buildings to have the paintings. What we've done is try to really highlight the wall painting, uh, try to promote the areas that we, the remains as much as possible, show them in their best light, uh, reveal as much detail as possible for the public and to really um, interpret the wall painting for the public. We now have a, a panel, we have a reconstruction drawing uh, which helps to give the public an idea of what the painting would have looked like originally. It's not an accurate reconstruction, it's not 100% accurate because of the damage that has been caused to the wall painting over the years. But what the artist has tried to do with his impression is give an idea of the rich colours and the ornate decoration would have been used on the original wall painting. It would have been quite a stunning room originally and we hope that the public will be able to get a sense of that richness of colour and ornate design.